has been a, a crusader for the rights of black people all of his life. He has also been a crusader that have had a lot of friends, not only in the black community, but the white community in sports. He's always been outstanding, always an individual, always speaking his mind, always giving you a platform to express your views. And when I was incarcerated, he did everything he could to uh, attack those that incarcerated me unfairly. And uh, he's one of my friends over the years. We've done many things together. So Harold is truly a man, truly a man that believes in his culture and his people and will always be that way because nobody's ever been able to change him. So, <laughs> hey, that's my part. This is the heavyweight champion of the world, George Foreman, for the best in sports and sports personalities. When I am in Washington, D.C., I check out my good friend, Harold Bell, and Inside Sports. Talking about a real champion, Harold Bell and Inside Sports. For many fans of the sweet science of boxing, the head rat has long been Don King, a one-time numbers runner and street punk who served jail time for manslaughter. King has been called a ghetto Machiavelli, a high-stakes hustler, a celebrity promoter who has guided the careers, some say victimized boxing stars, from Muhammad Ali to Mike Tyson. And with us in Washington, Harold Bell, a pioneer in the field of sports talk radio and TV. Mr. Bell has known Don King for more than 20 years. Hi, this is Don King of Don King Productions for the undisputed champion of sports talk. You must turn to my man, Harold Bell, and the original Inside Sports. For the best in sports and sports personalities, Inside Sports and Harold Bell are knockouts. Everybody's always talking about the controversial Muhammad Ali, heavyweight champion of the world. I talked with Muhammad, and here's what he had to say about all this. Well, I'm just being myself, but a lot of people, a lot of things change. Time brings about a change. People forget. You know, Kennedy, Martin Luther King, or dead, Nat King Cole, or people like Dinah Washington. I can go on and you didn't think about them until I just mentioned them. Planes crash with 150 people on it, lawyers and people all walks of life, and next day it's old news. So these things happened then, and they believe they were right when they said them, and it's all over, and we don't hold things against people. Hi, welcome to the award-winning Ed Brown Show. Once again, you just saw a clip there of Muhammad and me. And uh, Harold Bell is going to be starting a series here about sports, inside sports. And we're going to give you more about that later. Okay. Harold, tell us a little bit about, uh, I mean, we don't have time to go all the way back to <laughs> 70, but just tell us, how did you get involved with Inside Sports? You were, you were one of the main individuals that uh, worked it, well, and that was and, years ago. Yeah, Inside Sports changed the format of how sports is discussed today on radio and television. When Inside Sports came on the scene, which my wife, I give her all the credit for coming up with the title Inside Sports, I give the credit to her, but we changed the way people listen and look at sports today. Mm. Before Inside Sports came on, only guys were giving, the sportscasters were giving scores, uh, how many outs, batting average, mm. well, Inside Sports took it to a whole nother level. Mm. I was the first one ever to write commentaries, I was the first one to ever have a sports media roundtable, which you mm -hmm. participated right. on a regular basis with Frank Pastor and, yeah. and, and Frankovich and Rich. George Solomon and Dave Dupree, uh, yeah. Bill Roden from the New York Times. We started all of that on Inside Sports. I was the first one to ever play message music, uh -huh. like what's going on uh -huh. and uh, wake up everybody, you know. Uh -huh. And it just took it to a, a whole nother level. We were able to get uh, the Washington Redskins. We got guys like Dave Bing. Uh, involved, uh, Wooly Wood. They were the first professional mm -hmm. athletes to get involved in the, in the community. Mm -hmm. And all that came through inside sports. That's sports. Okay. So now you see today what we sports talk shows, they've gone, they gone to a whole nother level too. Right. But what we want to do, we want to talk about this uh, book that you uh, uh, wrote there about Muhammad and me. Yeah. We saw that clip. And uh, what I want you to do, how did you get involved with Muhammad? Give us some well, background. Well, I met Muhammad Ali through a friend of mine by the name of Harry Barnett mm -hmm. and uh, Jim Bethea. Jim Bethea used to be a, I don't know if you remember Jim Bethea now, he used to write 
uh, for the Washington Post yeah. and the um, right. the other newspaper. I forgot the name of it, but anyway, what, what's Jim. Washington Times. What? Washington Times. It was no. the Washington Star. Star. Yeah, Star. Right. 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 Washington, Star. Right. Star. Right. Right. Washington right. Times. Right. Mm. And Jim and Harry Barnett invited me to go to Cleveland with them for an exhibition that Muhammad Ali was putting on for a chair for a hospital up mm -hmm. there. So I said, why not? Why not take the ride? And I went up there, and that's where I first met Don King and Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was there that Muhammad Ali decided against everybody's wishes uh, to give Don King, make him the first black promoter mm -hmm. in boxing. Mm -hmm. You know, everybody, all, everybody, they just, because Don was such a notorious crook. He said, man, <laughs> you don't want to be bothered with Don King. Uh -huh. Muhammad Ali, always his own man, decided, I'm going to give this brother a break. Mm -hmm. And that's why Don King is where he is today. And he ended up even stealing from Muhammad Ali. Mm -hmm. you, know, he, you know, he got a bad reputation for taking the money from the, the fighters, but he mm -hmm. even took some from Muhammad Ali, which I was very disappointed mm -hmm. in Don King. But that's where I first more met Muhammad Ali, and our relationship grew from there. He mm -hmm. came up to Howard University. Uh, to speak to the kids up there, and, uh -huh. and he and I walked the community together and got became very close, and mm -hmm. uh, and that's how you know came up with the idea of doing my first uh, sports special. I was the mm -hmm. first black to ever do a sports special on NBC Channel Four mm -hmm. uh, uh, with Muhammad Ali. He was mm -hmm. my special guest. Is that in right? Prime time. That's right. Fantastic. Mm -hmm. I went right before the Washington Redskins played the uh, Oakland Raiders. Mm -hmm. I did a half hour show with Muhammad Ali. Roy Jefferson was on that show. Billy Kilmer was on that show. Uh, we took a look at uh, at the racing uh, uh, behind the scenes. So a lot of things developed from Muhammad Ali. Muhammad Ali and Red Auerbach, I give all the credit for giving making uh, uh, Inside Sports credible, you mm -hmm. know, because they were always there uh, whenever I needed them. I mm -hmm. could always get in touch with them. Yeah. Mm -hmm. You were able to develop a relationship with uh, Yeah, that's right, they? yeah. Well. And I didn't have to go through any agents, mm -hmm. entourage, or anybody. <laughs> that's what makes a difference. Right, right. That's, yeah. That makes a big difference, you know, uh, when you're dealing with a person on a personal level mm -hmm. like that, you know, that you get involved. Well, what made you think about uh, giving a book? You just want to... Well, uh, I've had so know. many experiences, you know. This, this is a walkthrough not only boxing history, but sports history. Mm. Uh, you stop and think about the people who came through Inside Sports and Kids in Trouble, which is my nonprofit organization. Mm. John Thompson came through there. Mm. All these people came through Inside Sports before they got their 15 minutes uh, of fame. John mm. Thompson, James Brown, mm. Michael Wilbon, David Aldrich, Kathy Hughes, uh, Adrian Dantley, um, Adrian Branch, mm -hmm. and, and the list goes on and on of people who came through Inside Sports. Mm -hmm. And these are people that are in the media today. Mm -hmm. You understand? Yeah, who are on sure. radio, television today. Right. All these people got their start at in, on Inside Sports. Glenn Harris, mm -hmm. Butch McAdams. Yeah. All of them came. Ed Brown. Right, right. Well, what's what's my other right. man's name to call himself Inside Sports now? Uh, uh, <laughs> what are you talking about? McCaffrey? Yeah, McCaffrey. <laughs> he came through uh, yeah. Inside Sports. And... Mm -hmm. um, Mm -hmm. And, of course, Ed, uh, there's a picture on, on the screen now with you and Pam McGee. Yeah. We had her on Inside Sports. Right, And, and right. Pam is the uh, and that's mother. The, uh, that's Ed Brown in, in the, the red corner. shirt. You can see him He's peeping the around the corner there. Yeah. <laughs> Pam McGee <laughs> was an All-American at the University of uh, Southern Cal. Is it? And, yeah. And uh -huh. that's her son. Uh, Jay uh, 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 McGee on the on the uh, Wizards now. Yeah, that's yeah. Frankovich, yeah. Ed Brown and and uh, Harold Bell with the, <laughs> with the uh, earphones on there. That was at W O O K Radio. W O O K. That's what I got I know, my first uh, sports show. I know what happened is that uh, uh, I think you were doing that and I was at W O L at yeah. that time. Yeah. yeah, I started out and, at W O L. Yeah. Most with Bobby us, Bennett. Yeah, yeah, most of us did. And, mm -hmm. and don't forget Peter Green. Oh, Peter Green was the one that gave him <laughs> my start. Yeah, I, he gave us all yeah, a start. I used to be on Peter's <laughs> show on Sundays mm -hmm. talking sports. And Petey got to the point and said, man, get your own show. Stop coming on my show. Yeah, right. And that's what I did. Uh, right. Bobby Bennett uh, developed a sports talk show on Saturdays, mm -hmm. and I co-hosted with Bobby. Mm -hmm. After that, the sky was the limit. I decided to leave there and go to WOK. Mm -hmm. And uh, hey, man, inside sports is used around the world, yeah. inside the NFL, inside mm -hmm. the NBA, yeah, the inside Washington, right. Right. all that. Mm -hmm. All that, they, they, well, they well, piggyback. OK, well, tell us a little more about Muhammad. The, uh, personal well, life of him. What well, kind you know, of person, Muhammad. What kind of person was he's he? He's a special person. You know, he's and, a special and, person. And you, you know, because you were able to uh, 
talk to him, not in the media, right. manner, but as a friend. Yeah. Well, you, you know, know, he's a very special guy. Not nothing. He wasn't perfect now. Don't make mm -hmm. no mistake. He was a, he, he, he could he be the <laughs> devil. He could be the devil when he wanted <laughs> well, to be. But he was a, a very. What is that? Float like a yeah. butterfly, sting like a bee. But, yeah, he thing, made that famous. Yeah. But the thing that, that really uh, that made Muhammad you know, a very credible guy is that he had integrity mm -hmm. and loyalty. He, un he understood what loyalty meant. If he mm -hmm. gave you his word, he kept it, mm -hmm. you know. But I remember when I first did my first television show with him, I, he asked me, Harold, what you want to do, man? What you want to do? I said, I want to do, do a television show with you. Mm -hmm. He said, okay. I was supposed, he was trying to talk me to go into Zaire for mm -hmm. the, um, for the George Foreman fight. Foreman fight. Yeah, yeah, but I didn't I didn't like flying, going across <laughs> all that water. All that water. <laughs> I said, man, I'm going to stay here and watch it. So he <laughs> He used to be scared to fly too, so he looked at me and said, Muhammad. Yeah, he said, chit, chit, yeah. chit, chit. And you're right. Yeah. I was I was about to fly across uh, all that water, but uh, that was one of the regrets that I had that I missed that mm -hmm. uh, fight in Zaire because they stayed over there almost two weeks because, mm -hmm. you know, George Foreman got hurt. Mm -hmm. And uh, George Foreman tried to leave the country, but the dictator, they said, no, you're not leaving here. All mm -hmm. this money I got involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But Muhammad, man, was, uh, was, was a good person. He loved children. Yeah, that's he what loved, I was doing. He, he loved His aspects children. with children. Yeah, he loved, little... he loved children and beautiful mm -hmm. women. Mm -hmm. Now, yeah. if a beautiful, beautiful woman, woman was around and a child was around, <laughs> you had to get back. You had to you get know, back. Get back uh, and wait your uh, turn. Uh, because he loved, uh, he loved, he did really sincerely uh, love children, man. And that's, I think... That's what made us a really close friends because I was heavily involved with kids in trouble at the time and working with young people, and he encouraged me, mm -hmm. man. Just, just, oh, the, just, yeah. that, that program you were involved with, yeah. uh, tell us a little bit yeah. about well, it. Kids, kids in, trouble. in Trouble, I founded in 1968. My wife and I founded it mm -hmm. in 1968, right after the rides. Okay, give uh, me your yeah. wife's name, too. Give Hattie Bell, credit. yeah. Right, Hattie, yeah. Hattie T, yeah. Right, yeah. We, uh, we decided to find uh, Kids in Trouble because... Uh, so many young folks were burned out of their homes and stuff. And mm -hmm. People, their parents lost their jobs up in the Northwest area. My mm -hmm. wife was teaching at Cadoza at the time, and well, she was my, my, my friend then, and I was working as a roving leader for the D.C. Recreation Department. Mm -hmm. So we said, what are we going to do about these kids for Christmas? You know, mm -hmm. their parents don't have no job. They, mm -hmm. they hardly can make it. And we came up with the idea for uh, the Christmas first Christmas toy party. Mm -hmm. I was playing with the Virginia Sailors at the time. Remember mm -hmm. the Virginia yeah, Sailors? Right. <laughs> I was playing wide receiver for the Virginia Sailors. <laughs> so I got my teammates together. George, um, George Kelly played Santa Claus for me. Bob Hidden mm -hmm. and all of us got toys for the kids. My wife got the staff at Cadoza to bring food. And we had the first Christmas toy party in 1968 at 14th and W Street at Hillcrest Children's Center Saturday program. Fantastic. And we've been doing it ever since. This this is coming up on our 42nd year now. And we mm. usually no do- No kidding. Yeah, 40 seconds for 40. Huh? We've been doing it longer than anybody other than the Marines. This is the longest ongoing Christmas toy party in the country. Is that right? That's right. And uh, no grants, no loans, mm. just uh, help from friends and uh, putting our own money in. But mm. we did elementary schools from Maryland, Virginia, and D.C. We touched over, man, forty thousand kids probably. Mm -hmm. You know, in in uh, in, in the forty, in the forty or four thousand kids, because uh, hey, we just touched so many kids, man. And uh, that program helped mm -hmm. help uh, bring all that about. Mm -hmm. I had Roy Jefferson mm -hmm. come in. I had yeah. Harold McClinton Clinton right. playing Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. I had Dave Robinson, the Redskins playing Santa Claus. Mm -hmm. uh, Roy <laughs> and all of them. Harold, you know, Harold mm -hmm. got. Mm -hmm. Got killed out there on 495 by Bowling Air Force Base, but he was a great, great uh, human being and a great guy who cared about the community mm -hmm. too. I was the first one to get judges involved. I had the D.C. judges at um, Judge Luke Moore, Judge uh, Harry T. Alexander, mm -hmm. 